Yo, what's going on everybody? It's our Pod King Carter here, the Superman of YouTube. I had a banging skip for this video, but I'm sorry, I have to talk about the NBA draft. As a Philadelphia 76ers fan, if I don't talk about this, if I don't speak on this, I'm not a true fan. But let's hop into this game versus the Heat, y'all. Let's do it. Florida as we see a beautiful bird's eye view of the American Airlines Arena. We're in a place they call the American Airlines Arena in downtown Miami. All right, you guys, it's finally time to give you my thoughts, my beliefs, and my disappointment in the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, in my association, yes, we did get in the lands Noel, but we ended up giving up Evan Turner. But in real life, the Philadelphia 76ers decided to give up their all-star point guard, Drew Holiday. Now, let me give you some facts on stats. Drew Holiday averaged 17.7 points a game. That's almost 18 points. He averaged 8 assists. That's coming in on 4th out of all the point guards in the league. Come on, man. 18 and 8? What, what more could you ask for, not including the 4 rebounds that he contributed? Now, when you put all of your, you know, your money on a potentially great center as Nerlens Noel, he's only 18, he's 6'11", almost 7 foot, and he only weighs 216 pounds. This dude, he was skinnier than Dwight when Dwight came in the league. This dude is going to need to put on weight. Not, not let alone he's coming off an injury, an ACL. Wow. So you really put your money on a, a, a torn ACL recover and the potential that he will be great. Yeah, he's a good defender. Yes, don't get me wrong. He's good, but when it comes to the offensive side, mm, not so much. Now, in his one year in college, he averaged about 9-9. Nine and nine, And he averaged, I think, like four blocks. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll take those blocks. Cool with me. But the thing you have to realize is when it comes to defense, Nerlens Noel isn't willing to fight down low with defender. I mean, with offensive players. What he's going to do is he's going to wait for that guy to go up and depend on his leaping ability to get those blocks. Now, we all know the up and under is cheese. So, I believe it's going to be a lot of people in the league that are going to give this dude the up and under. And he's going to be jumping out his shoes. That, that's all I'm going to say right there. You know what I'm saying? But... What I want you guys to do is inside the description, I have a few links for you guys to click. There are the scouting reports for Nerlens Noel, the scouting report for Michael Carter Williams, which the next person I'm going to be getting into, and of course, uh, what is his last name? What is this dude's first and last name? I think it's uh, Arsalan Kazami, Kazimi, whatever. But, you know, it's links inside there for scouting reports, interviews, and stuff like that. But the next thing I want to get into is Michael Carter Williams. Now, you give up Drew Holiday to the New Orleans Pelicans. I'm going to call them the Pelicans. Why not? Why not do it, right? So, the thing that I'm thinking about is, all right, you give up Drew and you put more faith in a new up-and-coming guy. You don't, you don't go out and get somebody, you know, out of free agency. You really sit there up there and tell your fans that you believe that Michael Carter Williams is the way to go in a rebuilding season. Okay, let me give you the pros and cons of Michael Carter Williams. Pros, he's 6'5". Oh, you thought it was more pros to that? No, no, not at all. He's 6'5", that's it. Other than that, he's like any other point guard. Point guards are known to pass. Point guards are known to try to get their teammates involved, which Drew Holiday was doing with eight assists. And Drew Holiday, believe it or not, he's 6'3", 6'4". You know what I'm saying? With, with good wingspan. Carter Williams, he's 6'5", with a 6'5", wingspan. You know, that? okay, cool with me. Now, when it comes to aggression, Drew Holiday is aggressive. He gets to the bracket. Uh, he shoots a good jump shot. Carter Williams, 
mm, gets to the gets to the rack, you know, because of his um his long uh what 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 should I call it like you know when he takes steps, they're longer steps and stri strides. He takes longer strides than other point guards because of his height. Now, when it comes to the jump shot, Carter Williams' jump shot isn't all that great. Now, you're going to tell me, well, Drew Holiday got a lot of turnovers this season. He, I think he averaged, what, about three-something turnovers? Okay. When Carter Williams' first year in the league, well, not the league, but in the college scene, he averaged, I think, like 10 points and like 1.2 uh, assists. When he got the starting position the prior season, he averaged, I think, what, like, like seven or something assists, but then he ended up averaging 3.4 turnovers per game. And I've seen his highlight tape. It, it looks pretty good until you look at his scouting report. Once you see his scouting report, he, he doesn't like making hard decisions. He He's not great under pressure at all. I've seen a lot of turnovers from this dude when, when dudes double-team him in the backcourt and they put that them, them paws on him. He, he gets real scared real fast. And when it comes to that jump shot, he'll take a contested three over a mid-range jump shot. He, he won't. And, oh, man, let me tell you about him and his passing. When he passes, he passes out of jumping. He doesn't pass out of a shot. He'll jump and try to look like, you know, survey the floor and try to throw it to a teammate. By this time, guys are sticking to their men because they know what you're about to do. So I hope that he does not do this, the things that he did in his college career. I hope he doesn't bring that to the NBA. So, all in all, Drew Holiday for Nerlens Noel was not a good move. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, man, you got to live with it. Well, as of right now, that deal did not go through. You don't see on the 76ers Twitter, their website, nothing like that saying, welcome Nerlens Noel. They have to get approval from the league for this trade. This trade has to get approved now. Moving on from that. Michael Carter Williams, yes, he got picked number 11. There's nothing you could do about that. He is the point guard. You feel me? But we still have to wait on the other deal to go through. Now, moving on to a, the next pick, Glenn Rice Jr. Okay, cool. Glenn Rice Jr., baby. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? He about, what, 6'6", six, six, guard? Well, guess what? Now he played for the Washington Wizards. The Sixers gave that pick up real quick. Now, the next pick. Pierre Jackson, okay, 5'10", short guy, point guard, you know what I'm saying, trying to get in and out of traffic, you know, almost almost a Ty Lawson type of guy, but guess what, he plays for the New Orleans Pelicans as well, so you're telling me the Sixers just sent two point guards to the Pelicans, okay, cool with me, I ain't gonna worry about it, that's what they do, you know what I'm saying, they got a couple good picks, you know, for next year, but we'll talk about that in a second, now the next thing up, Arsalan Kazami, Kazimi, whatever. Now, my my whole thing about him is, looks like a good solid guy. He looks very aggressive. I will say that he's he's undersized for the uh, power forward position, but I think he'll be a good you know slashing small forward. You know, some somebody to cut to the basket, get open, and get buckets. Now, as it goes for dribbling and his jump shot. Mm, not so much. I'm going to have to see a little bit more from him. But from his highlight tapes and all the footage that I've seen from him, I probably watched about six or seven videos. From what I've seen, he's good when it comes to playing the passing lanes. Very good. And he's great out on a break. He has great awareness. And boy, can he leap. I, I don't know, man. Him and that is young, running the floor. I might, I might literally like that. I, I might like to see that. You know, it might be something good out of that. Now... Let's see the next thing that I can move into. Overall, how should I say? Sam Hinkie. Woo. Man, you're going to have a couple problems, bro. <laughs> Seriously, me and you are going to have a couple problems. Now, the next big thing on the list is the Sixers still do not have a head coach. No, they do not have a head coach. A lot of people were reporting that the Spurs assistant coach was going to coach the Sixers. Sam Hinkie and the Sixers denied that quick fast. They said, no, nah, bruh, y'all done got that wrong. We ain't waiting on them. So, you know, it is what it is. A little bit of new news that I just found out while I was doing this commentary was that Kwame Brown is going to exercise his player option 
for 2.95 mil and return to the Sixers. Why is he still? Why? 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 Please let that man go. Oh my. These goddamn player option contracts, boy, I tell you. And what makes it so funny is, in my association, Kwame Brown exercised his player option to get the heck out of here. Quick, fast, but in real life, he chose to stay. So, you know, it is what it is. But, man, all in all, this NBA draft was was very crazy. I believe that the Sixers are just trying to wait for next year to, you know, get some good draft picks. To get a, I guess, a better point guard, maybe a, a, a better shooting guard. You know, I, I don't know what they're thinking. You know, I wish I was on the uh, front office. I wish I knew what was going on behind closed doors. But the way I see things, with them securing New Orleans um, Pelicans pick, I think they're trying to get a top five pick. But this is the funny thing. With you wanting to secure uh, a possible top five pick, why would you give them your all-star point guard so you're telling me right now you're gonna you you just gave the pelicans drew holiday austin rivers they still got eric gordon aminu and anthony davis robin lopez like really you just you just gave them what they've been looking for the pelicans been looking for a point guard ever since they gave up Chris Paul. Now, okay, they got Vasquez. That's cool. That's all. That's all good and dandy. But with Drew Holiday over there, they they might go off. I'm 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 gonna say that right here, right now. They might go off. It might, it might be a good season for them now if they make the playoffs. I am gonna laugh so hard. I, you you don't understand how much I'm gonna be laughing at the Sixers because they did that to themselves. If they think that New Orleans isn't going to be better with Drew Holiday, I don't know. I don't know if you put any type of belief in a in your uh, your previous player at all. You know, to ship him off and say, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get y'all pick because y'all gonna be ass." That's crazy. They got Brooklyn second round pick. Um, I think they got something from Washington. Not totally too sure on that, but free agency is going to be very very crucial. I don't know what they're thinking right now because Andrew Bynum, reportedly, he's not returning. Um, another big thing is uh, all the players' contracts that they currently have, it's a lot of guys with this being their last year. You know, um, Andrew Bynum is a free agent, of course. You got Darrell Wright. You got Nick Young. You got Charles Jenkins. And you got Royale Ivy and Damian Wilkins. So you got a bunch of guys about to become free agents so are they going to re-sign these same guys or are they going to let them leave and hope to get a big name out of free agency and the funny thing is out of all the reports i've been watching out of everything i've been you know trying to look up and trying to figure out and try to you know get some type of knowledge of the sixers haven't said who they're looking at in free agency and it's it's funny because it's going to be so many new free agents like take for instance okay you got remember andrew bynum you have monte ellis you have tyreek evans you have manu ginobili you have dwight howard andre iguodala you have al jefferson brandon jennings you have wesley johnson chris Kamen. You got O.J. Mayo, Paul Millsap. You also have Chris Paul, Josh Smith, and don't forget about J.R. Swish. You also have Nate Robinson. You got Jeff Teague and David West. So when it comes to free agency, the Sixers have to be smart about this. Now, from what I've saw, they only have Michael Carter-Williams and Kazami. So that's the only two players from the draft that they currently have. They're still waiting for that deal to go through with Noel. So that means that they'll have a center. Now you have Kwame Brown returning. So now I guess you have a backup center. And with Halls, I don't know what they're going to do. You know, you still got Lavoy Allen. You got Spencer. You got Thaddeus. I, to, the way I see it, they must be trying to look for either a small forward or a good backup shooting guard or even a veteran uh, point guard to, you know, somehow get Williams across the hump that he's going to have to try to get through. 
So that right there is my thoughts on the NBA draft. Um, Statement-wise, I do not like the Drew and uh, Nerlens Noel um, trade at all. You know, I don't like the fact that you trade away your all-star just to get a prospect, you know, whatever beliefs you may have, you know. But <sighs> Michael Carter-Williams, I hope you do good. You better do good. You're 6'5". You better do amazing. <laughs> and uh, uh, Kazami, Kazimi, I'm sorry if I keep messing up your name. I hope you just bring that aggression to the NBA, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's the only draftee that they've got that has went through every year of college. You know, he's been in college, I think, since either 08 or 09. So, you know, he's he's 23, grown man, you know. So, I'm hoping that he does good. Now, uh, as it goes for the gameplay, I'm sorry I haven't been, you know, tuned into the highlights. But did you just check out LeBron get lifted on the whole team? You can't tell me Hall of Fame ain't crazy. Look at the score right now. Like, this is what I have to deal with playing in this association. 160 to 159? Like, are you serious? This is this is real-life scores right here? Like, oh, my goodness. But as I was playing the game, I just wanted to show y'all that uh, I be playing on Hall of Fame, regular settings, nothing crazy. I just play on Hall of Fame, and that's it. I don't play on simulation and all that. I don't play on no, you know, game speed changes and all of that. But right here, my boy Drew Holiday. Yes. Drew. <laughs> He, he puts the nails in the coffin. Yo, I'm going to miss him, yo. If this deal go through, I'm going to miss him, man. Real rap. But he puts the nails in the coffin. Um, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, are you going to give up Drew Holiday and your association? Hell no, I ain't giving up Drew Holiday. You got to be out your mind. I ain't Sam Hinky, And I make sure I put Sam Hinky in the chokehold in my association. You best to believe that. I'm going to make him make a statement next video. His statement is going to be, Drew Holiday isn't going to leave, guys. <laughs> But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for um, for listening to my thoughts. Please leave your thoughts inside the comment section. I greatly appreciate it. I guess i leave this video a like and all of that great stuff. But we're about to hop into this beat, you know what I'm saying, by Kill Confirm. It's called Winning. Let's get it. Now, looking at some game stats, guys, the three-pointers was outrageous by my team. Yes, that's the only way that we were going to keep up with the heat. We had to shoot the pill. Hey, man, that's what you got to do sometimes. It's hard out here. You can't keep up with teams on Hall of Fame if you ain't shooting threes. You know what I'm saying? If I see somebody with 160 points against the computer and they ain't shooting no threes, I'm going to figure out how in the heck they kept getting to the rim. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, this ain't my career now. But uh, just check out the points, man. 37 points by Chalmers. Oh, my God. But everybody else did what they had to do. Now, Drew Holiday scored his 5,000th point as a 76er. So happy about that. Bye, Beverly. <laughs> Year. This is Siri. Thank you for watching and be sure to like this video. For more videos from this particular mode, click more videos. If you want to see more content from IKC, click subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to follow IKC on Twitter and to like his Facebook page. This is Siri signing out. Peace.